Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 27th, 2022 work session of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States, of, United States of America, and to the republic which stands for which one nation, one nation under God, under God is well with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, so uh, we have a little bit of a change up here tonight. Uh, our town planner is uh, stuck at home and is uh, joining us via Zoom or remote or whatever program is being used for that. Lori, would you uh, sure. like to uh, call the roll? Hetsky. Hetsky here. Aiken. Aiken here. Burton. Burton here. Knauer. Knauer here. Tidings. Tidings here. Sangster. Sangster here. Weissar. Weissar here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Dubrack. Dubrack here. Gray here. Okay. We have minutes from January 13th. Um, I saw minutes Actually, from January 13th. No. No, they're not finished. We, they're not completed at this time yet. We're still working through them. Uh, I guess they were a draft then. Okay. We will hold off on minutes until... Um, next next meeting so uh, why don't we start going through the table applications all right your first table application is the uh, <coughs> pathstone application uh, 1787 1801 Enfield Road or Fairport Nine Mile Point Road uh, no new materials have been submitted since the last meeting um, we've been going back and forth with them on um, some potential changes so no action is required by the board tonight Okay, moving on. All right, application number two, Highland Estates, 2735 and 2745 Penfield Road. Um, since we last met, uh, staff has gone through and drafted a neg deck and uh, part two, part three EAF for the application for your review. Um, we are coming closer to the conclusion of this application. Um, at this time, we've received everything that I think the board needs uh, to make a uh, secret determination, um, which is why we provided the night deck. Um, since then, they've also given us uh, revised plans, including this uh, revised aerial uh, rendition of the site plan. Um, at this point, staff is working with them on uh, small technical comments uh, regarding the application, and we're comfortable if the board is interested in moving forward. So I'll start with uh, uh, a recommendation that the uh, board accept the uh, determination of a negative declaration um, and approve the uh, uh, EIF. Okay, do we have a second? I will second that. All right. Board member Aiken's first second. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. So, uh, Negative declaration of environmental significance for this application. <clears throat> and are there any other outstanding issues that we need to cover before we uh, begin drafting a uh, an approval resolution? Was that Panda? I don't know if you guys know or yeah, don't know. I, I would uh, <coughs> prefer to have an opportunity to uh, review this before uh, proceeding in that direction. Okay. Okay. All right, so you want to move to continue moved. table pending? Yeah. Um, so moved, continue table. Tiding second. Sure. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Moving on. Uh, application number three, 
uh, the Arbors at Penfield. Um, 1600 to 1657 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, uh, 1255 Penfield Center Road, and 3278 Atlantic Avenue. Uh, so since our last meeting, the applicant has responded both to the tabling resolution um, and provided an uh, response to the tabling resolution as well as a, an open space plan. I don't know, PCTV, I can't, unfortunately I can't see, there we go. Um, so staff uh, appreciates the, the open space plan. Um, and, but a, a lot of our concerns, you know, regarding the board had, had stated there were some concerns regarding the, the public versus private uh, nature of some of the open space uh, along the site and that the, the majority of uh, the areas that they are showing on this map as open space are, are areas that are um, dedicated exclusively for the use of the residents um, and not for the general public uh, or are not necessarily, uh, they're not inviting the general public to, to, to use these areas. Um, and, it, and it's been long, you know, part of the mixed use, uh, when the mixed use rezoning was going through and the mixed use committee was meeting, you know, in exchange for, you know, a lot of the density that was, was going to be allowed within the mixed use district, there were certain aspects of, of community betterment that were um, expected sort of in, in change for, for the ability to, to build uh, something that is much more dense than would have uh, been allowed under the, the, the previous uh, zoning. Um, so I know there was some concern with, you know, the fact that this development, um, that the open spaces were feeling a bit like a, a, a gated community um, to, to some respects that um, it really wasn't, you know, the, the park spaces that are being provided are not being provided for, for residents of the area. They're being provided exclusively for, um, you know, the residents of this community. Uh, the applicant has responded and provided a letter with their responses. Um, clarifying that, um, that they are providing the, you know, more than enough open space um, per the guidelines within table 6.1.5 of the mixed use development manual uh, that provides a recommendation for um, minimum open space uh, within each of the development zones. Um, however, they still, um, their statement that, you know, they're neither inviting nor prohibiting public access to the property, you know, you know they responded that it, it, it essentially means that there's not gonna be a sign, they're not gonna put signs on the edge of the property saying no trespassing. Um, you know, and not providing, you know, some visible indication that the public's not allowed. So, so in that way, it is sort of quasi open to the public. Um, it may be something that the board wants to uh, figure out with them if there are areas that could or should be uh, more publicly accessible uh, or open for public use. Um, as part of this, you know, community development, um, it, it's going to be, you know, it's relatively large uh, in scale, especially even within the mixed use district, it's, it's relatively large in scale. Um, so having an area where um, not only residents could come, but having areas where, um, you know, neighboring uh, folks in the neighboring developments or in the neighboring area in East Penfield uh, would be able to have you know, access to some form of parkland or open space um, to utilize um, really fits with the intent of the mixed use district in, in creating a destination. So I encourage the board to 
review this. They did just provide it, uh, I believe, yesterday afternoon. Um, so staff is still still going through and, and will be um, responding to their um, comments back um, through the PRC process. Uh, but we haven't gotten to the point where we've, we've drafted a memo yet. Okay. Yeah, any, any I think comments? we need. I think we need some time to review these comments. The fact that they <coughs> just came in. Mm -hmm. um, so I would um, um, move that we continue to table this application. Fighting second. Okay. Um, just a little bit of discussion on that. What I. One thing that I would like to potentially see in this uh, tabling resolution is a request to um, provide, if possible, some examples of similar developments uh, with this whole public-private use situation or non-use situation. You know, to me, it's kind of a laissez-faire type attitude, which I don't. I haven't formulated a strong opinion one way or the other yet, and what I'd like to see is is if there are other mixed-use developments, whether they're in New York State or elsewhere in the country, that have a similar structure to this that we might be able to see um, as examples for purposes of comparison. Okay. Mr. So I can add to the tabling resolution. So, with any other items you want in the tabling resolution? Okay. Um, call to question. So, we can take the vote. Is that Bob and Terry? Uh, Bob and Terry, yep. yep. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Moving on to application number four. Um, the Bramble Ridge subdivision, 35 Apollonia Lane. Um, since we last met, staff has met um, both with uh, Greg McMahon um, to discuss the stormwater improvements and the stormwater facility. Um, in previous renditions, they were showing a stormwater facility that was uh, split between two lots, um, and we didn't really have uh, engineering calculations to support the design um, or an understanding of whether this was just going to be supporting the, the two lots or whether this was going to support <coughs> the two lots and, and any future lots that are built as part of uh, the subdivision because there's still land left to be uh, subdivided and developed based on the, the preliminary subdivision they did in 2000. Um, so they met with Greg, engineers met with Greg McMahon. Um, they are working through, um, you know, the technical aspects of the stormwater management facility. Uh, in addition, we have had discussions with uh, Mr. DiPietro, um, the owner of, of the, the house there at the end of the cul-de-sac and the, the remaining lands, uh, that AR9C1. Um, about moving the pond uh, exclusively on that property so that the pond will be more evil, easily serviceable um, and having it on one property. He was amenable to that, um, said he was going to look at, at moving it uh, to his property and that he would, he would maintain it as a private pond, um, though the town will have an inspection easement over it. Um, but they have provided or they're providing uh, engineering calculations to support uh, the design of the pond. And at this point, uh, staff is comfortable working through the rest of the stormwater design in the pre-mylar phase. Uh, regarding the road, I know that it had been a concern we had discussed previously. Um, we have worked with uh, Mr. DiPietro uh, to come into an agreement that uh, when uh, the two lots, the final two lots at the front of the, the development uh, finish and, the, and potentially these two lots, that uh, the road improvements would happen after those four homes are built. And the town is still holding 
money to ensure that. So we, we are fairly comfortable about moving forward with the road as well. Okay. So those are really the... Yeah, I think so. Mike, you're good with that. Yep. Okay. <coughs> any other board members got any issues? Nope. I, oh, uh, there we go. Can I, can I say something? Um, I... Sure. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, we did provide uh, all the calculations. Uh, Mark Valentine has those. Uh, we provided those calculations and all the reports and everything else. And so I think that there aren't any issues that are, from an engineering standpoint, outstanding or planning. So we think we're, we're ready. Uh, I know they've got to take time to review the, the, all the materials that we submitted because it was about two inches thick. Mm -hmm. as, uh, Mike knows. I think you've seen that. So we've we've got that in. So we're it's in your hands. Thank you. Yeah, okay. That, that, like I was saying, uh, the engineers were comfortable, you know, reviewing it as as moving into the pre-marketing phase and being able to review it and then, um, you know, and finalize everything as part of that process uh, prior to final sign plans. Right. I today I reviewed their uh, engineers' report and um, I just have some minor technical things, but. It, the design is there. It's meeting what the town is looking for. So we we are fine with it. All right. So we could start moving toward uh, uh, an approval, approval resolution, resolution for if you so wish next uh, uh, next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would, you need a yeah. Maybe uh, I'll, move I'll to table it. pending uh, uh, preparation of uh, approval resolution for okay. action next meeting. That works. I'll make the motion to table it. And then uh, they can proceed with the uh, approval resolution for next month's meeting. Yep. Okay, I'll second. Okay, call the question. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. All right, we have one new business item for you guys as well. Um, uh, it came in here relatively recently. Um, so uh, back in 2020, uh, we did a, the planning board looked at a five lot subdivision at 3090 Atlantic Avenue. Uh, the board ultimately approved that five lot subdivision. Um, if you recall, there's the three lots fronting Jackson Road, a flag lot, and the, the original home or homestead lots. It's one right um, here at the corner, yeah. Jackson yes. and... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, uh, a family purchased the uh, homestead lots and were interested in, in purchase the lot R1 there, uh, which was the lot two of the, the uh, 3090 subdivision. Um, and they are interested in coming back uh, to you guys here uh, at the work session to merge the two lots together. Um, they're not interested in building a home on that second lot. They just want to have a, a, a nice large yeah. backyard uh, that buffers them from the neighbors. Okay. Um, anybody have any issues? No. Do you have any Good. issues, Mike? I do not have any issues. Okay. Uh, can we entertain a motion maybe to approve? So moved. Okay, moved by Aiken. Do I'll we have second. a second? I'll second. All right, second by Burton. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. I need to get the lingo down. You're, yeah. I'm you, learning. And you got to get your name in the minutes. I'm learning. You know, it's, uh, all these guys. You weren't here. Always <laughs> competing to get there. <laughs> Okay, that is approved. Uh, we also have to talk about uh, Taco Bell sketch plan. Taco Bell sketch plan, yes. Yeah. So we have, uh, staff has drafted a sketch letter um, based on the comments from the public hearing on the 13th for your review. Um, briefly going through it, uh, you know, the, the major concerns that we we had outlined, uh, uh, the board had outlined, was um, some concerns with 
the uh, snow storage and the division of the two lots. Um, that there are, um, I believe, ultimately it'll, it'll end up being five variances that are needed. Um, variances for um, parking, variances for setbacks for both buildings, uh, and variances for lot coverage for both buildings. And that uh, the variances are substantial. The, we pointed that out in the, the sketch letter. Um, an additional concern that we had pointed out was that the, the board had asked for or requested historical parking information for existing Taco Bells um, to ensure that the requested um, number of parking spaces was gonna be adequate since it was, it was substantially less than what is required by code. Um, and um, noting that if they, they are looking to do shared parking, a shared parking agreement will be required um, and expected within the, the preliminary final phase. Um, another point was um, at the public hearing, the applicant had stated they were interested in submitting two applications um, and separating out uh, each of the actions, um, treating home outlet and Taco Bell as, as two separate, separate applications. And it is a recommendation that they, they submit one application um, it reduces the, the number of public hearings, but the two applications are so intricately linked together and their, their design and even the variances are so reliant on um, each one um, that if that it really is more one application than two. Um, so that was a recommendation that we placed in there. Um, and then ultimately providing a summary of updates and changes. Um, to the project they propose um, when they submit preliminary final. So, Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't, I don't see why we shouldn't honor their request to handle these two applications separately. We don't know what their, what their plans are for the other property, and and uh, you know how that could be impacted. I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't stand on their own merit. As two separate applications. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. We've got one before us. And you know we've already discussed with them, um, you know, shared parking agreements and and uh, snow storage across the interior lot line and you know those kinds of things um, that would be contingent. But um, you know, I, it seems to me that this could be a burden on the applicant to force them to shove the other project in with this when it might not be germane. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts on that discussion? No. I can remove that section from the sketch letter. Well, so can yeah. I suggest something? Go ahead, Mike. Sure. Um, they are doing modifications to that second plan with pavement and stuff. Um, the engineering department has concerns with stormwater and the fact of currently there is no stormwater regulations that are, um, you know, uh, uh, water quality aspects to this property. Um, we're considering it as a redevelopment kind of site where there are certain regulations that they need to provide. Since currently there's nothing there, Just we want to, the... well, and right, and Ronaquay Bay is an impaired waterway, which is a, in the DEC world, a 303D because of phosphorus and all these other pollutants. So this drains to the Ronaquay Bay. So we were trying to maybe have the board suggest that they should provide some type of water quality. I don't need water detention. I don't need a pond. I don't need underground storage. I want to provide some type of water quality so that the runoff from these parking lots enters a mechanical system <clears throat> that could be the size, you know, is like the size of a manhole that mm -hmm. kind of separates out the trash and the, the, you know, the solids and stuff like that, that could be vacuumed out on a yearly maintenance plan and You're then about discharged. Like oil the, and water separator kind of a structure? Exactly. That, I mean, that's all we're really kind of looking for, but they're, with all these nuances of the separate applications, they kind of blow by all that stuff. And like I said, the engineering department just has, this is an opportunity to provide some betterment for at least stormwater on this site. So why can't we recommend that they 
provide that uh, and, and water quality if, study well, and suggest and that they provide a, a separator anyhow. Yeah, and, and not necessarily have it limited to stormwater management, but any other discipline that <coughs> um, would potentially be better from a holistic approach mm -hmm. and separate it out. If they want to do it separate, you know, I'm in a general agreement with Jim that why not let them? However, if it's going to be separate, let's make sure that all these things are taken care of so that it's not um, an opportunity to avoid right. dealing with any of these other. Well, and that's, uh, that really needs to, if that's your thoughts, then that should be incorporated into in the, the sketch, sketch letter. letter. I would 100% agree. Also, so let's, I would say we should include uh, verbiage to that effect in the sketch letter. Um, okay. And um, I'd like to take out paragraph three, just remove it. I, I don't really want to say that we're supportive or not supportive of an application in this regard. Okay. Because I think that it's a tenuous site uh, at best, and if they want to come, I don't want to necessarily encourage them, but I don't want to I just don't want to say anything, whether okay. encouraging or discouraging. And I don't see a reason why the absence of that paragraph would cause any problems. And then uh, subsequently after that, we change the next one to just the board has several concerns with the proposed development. Right, because we have also some concerns with the circulation pattern of the vehicles. I mean, correct. So it's, I mean, it's a difficult. It is. It's a difficult site that I don't want to say. Oh yeah, come on in. We we love it. Um, I I don't want to send a negative message, and right. I don't want to send a positive message. So we is, is, so is we asked for with that some or? historical parking data, and yep. and you know, he took the time to explain to us that uh, there operational program is changing correct with with probably a, new a world. lot of a right. lot of fast food restaurants so you know far be it from us to to tell him how how his demographic is going to work and how many people are going to come through pre-orders and park and, and come out and hand deliver or they're going to call in orders and get delivered by you know DoorDash or what you know uh, I agree with that the you know some of the points with the way the um, queuing aisle is structured in this case um, if somebody goes in to park whether it, even if it is a DoorDash person or something that's going into the restaurant to pick up food to deliver they're still going to be backing out have a hard into, time backing up right correct so, how are they going to manage traffic you know are people going to queue and are they going to stop right there and if somebody pulls off of creek street are they going to jump in line are we going to run mm -hmm. into conflicts there so all of those things i think they need to address account. i i was hoping that by asking him to to do that study of their <coughs> other facilities that he might realize himself what they need right and then if he can make uh you know a valid argument for uh, a reduction in required parking spaces and the ZBA goes along with it fine, but right. you know, it, you're right, it, it all does tie together because that, I think he knows that plan doesn't work. Right, you would hope. So, okay, any other uh, changes, uh, additions to this letter? Are we comfortable with it? Good with the suggested change that we've got. You good with that? You know what we gotta do? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I can get those modifications made. Somebody wanna move to send the letter? Tidings makes the motion to move. I'll second. Okay, moved by Tidings, seconded by Kenauer. We can call to uh, question. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. <clears throat> Any other action items or anything else? Nope. 
Okay. Um, one thing uh, I guess I need to uh, discuss just briefly. As you all know, um, Bill Bastian, uh, no longer a member of the board, he was the vice chair. And um, so we need to replace him as uh, with a new vice chair. And I'd like to have uh, um, Jim Burton fill that role. So uh, without any um, objection, uh, I'd like to maybe declare unanimous consent with that. If that's okay with everybody. And Second the motion. Welcome Jim as our new uh, <laughs> Planning Board Vice Chairman. Okay, passing all the work on to you. <laughs> all right. You're going to be gone starting the next meeting, right? Is that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to Tahiti for 17 weeks. Um, anything else that we need to all discuss? To guys tonight. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, Thanks for your participation. Be good, Doug. Yeah, Doug, uh, well. get, uh, hopefully you don't get too sick and get healthy uh, quickly, and we will Thanks. see everyone uh, on February 10th. And we will adjourn. Have a good night. <laughs>